Hi everybody. How are you today? Hope you're well. Today I want to do an experiment because I was asked about why do I use the Australian Floetrol instead of the American Floetrol to make a bloom, um, to make that really pretty lacing. Now this is Sheely Carruthers technique. She did develop this. This is I've been using my take on that technique. I don't use the exact ingredients that she uses. I use things that work for me. So that being said, I want to show you the difference between the American Floetrol and the Australian Floetrol. I'm going to start out. I have two small cups here. And I usually mix my Australian Floetrol three parts Floetrol one part Amsterdam titanium white paint. For this experiment, I'm going to do the same thing. Three parts Floetrol, one part paint. But we're going to do American Floetrol, and I have a half a teaspoon here. because I don't need a lot for the experiment. So I'm just going to carefully fill this three times. with my American Floetrol. Let it rain down in there. And then one time with my Amsterdam titanium white paint. And you'll see here why I did the Floetrol first. It drops right out of there. You don't have to scrape your paint out. Now I'm going to clean this. I'm just going to wipe it clean so we don't have any of the American Floetrol in it. Put this away. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here with the Australian Floetrol. So you don't need very much of this cell activator for one painting. So I did not want to mix up too much of it. That's why I'm going three half teaspoons here. Get this one a little fuller. And this is a bit thinner, the Australian Floetrol, a bit thinner than my American Floetrol. Boop, just like that. And set that off to the side. Just going to take a marker here and put a US and USA so that I don't forget which one is which. <laughs> All right, we're going to give it a good stir. We'll look at the consistencies together. Scraping the sides and making sure I get every bit mixed together. And here I will show you. Try and show you the consistency. Don't know if you can see that or not. But it runs off the stick. Leaves a little bit of a mound there, not much. That was the Australian. Now for the American Floetrol. And give that a good stir again. Let's 
screw around the sides and again I'm going to try and show you. This is a bit thicker. Same mix. This is just the American Floetrol is a quite a bit thicker. It doesn't want to run off of the stick. So let me get myself set up and we'll test these two. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I have two 8 by 8 inch canvases and I today am going to be using straight from the bottle, not mixed with anything, some folk art colors. This is a metallic black, sequin black. This is a purple color shift. And then I have some deco art, extreme sheen colors. I have garnet pink tourmaline, and rose quartz. This is my white paint. It is mixed thick. So this is one part paint, two parts Floetrol, and I did not put any water in here. So it's nice and thick to use as my base. And this is the Artist Loft, Artist Loft Flow Acrylics. I'm not sure if I said that or not. Put a puddle down. And I'm going to start this one off with garnet. I'm going to pop the bubbles in that first. A lot of bubbles. keep these in order so that I remember how I did them. I'm going to put some of my sequin black down. Not a lot of black. It just plays really nice with that garnet. And I'm going to go with the pink tourmaline next. Go with some of this purple flash, or actually it's called blue violet flash. And the reason I'm not putting anything in these um, craft paints is because they're about the right consistency already don't want them very thin for this technique. This is my rose quartz. And because this is a pretty big canvas, I'm going to just do another round of these colors in a small amount so that I have enough to go over here. Now I can see a ton of air bubbles in there. So I'm going to get rid of those first. And this is the Australian Floetrol with the Amsterdam paint. Down. 
And just so that you can see how I'm blowing, I grab some bendy straws here. I want to blow down and then over the colors. Okay, I get that area a little bit more. And then this area a little bit more. Okay, be a close up of this one. See how that's developing. And we'll let that come back to center and we'll build this one over here with the American Faux Draw. Nice puddle of that down. I'm going to go in with the same colors in the same order. So this is my garnet. And then some black, sequin black. I don't typically use folk art colors, but I happen to have these left over from something else I did. I can't even remember what it was. There's the pink tourmaline. The Color Shift Blue Violet. Then the Rose Quartz. And then we'll go around again. While I'm doing this, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Appreciate y'all coming and watching my videos. Keeps my channel going. Keeps my spirits up. Makes me want to continue to create. And thank you if you're new here for coming to see what my channel is about. If you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you hit it twice, you'll be notified when I upload new, vid new um, videos. The last one is the rose quartz. And then I have my American Flow Trawl, which if you remember, this was a bit thicker. So I'm going to get a bit of that. in the middle. Okay, I did not pop my bubbles first. Let me get those. Real quick. And the 
good old bendy straw. Okay, let me try and get this over a little bit. It's definitely not as easy to get them to spread out when you're using a straw instead of your breath, but for this demonstration, I wanted you to see how I was blowing it. That's about all I can do. Let's take a close up of this one. Looking pretty similar so far. Now I have used the American combination in the past. It turned out really nice for me. Um, but I wanted to see how the Australian Floetrol worked. So I went ahead and got some of that just to do the test. Now we'll see which one actually looks better. Put a little bit more of the white paint around here so that I can stretch this. Get it out to the corners while that other one is regaining its level. When you blow on your paint like that, it goes down to the canvas. Makes it a little bit stuck to your surface. So. I have enough to do over here. Looks like I made just the perfect amount of white paint here. Just getting this married together here. And do the same over here. See, now what I am seeing on the Australian side is there's not very much white left in the mix. That kind of sunk. Made really nice lacing and sunk down and you see the colors more prominently. But it has sat longer than this other side. So I'm going to move this one aside so that I don't drip on it when I'm tilting. Give this a nice stretch. Give you a close up of it before I start stretching it. So you can see what I was talking about as far as the white disappearing and you see the colors up instead of the white. And stretch it very slowly, making 
Make sure you recenter yourself. Stretch over to the side. Bring it back to the center. I'm going to work on bringing it down to this corner a bit. Just slowly. Bring it back to the center. I'm going to bring it down to the side closest to me. Don't think I'm back to the center completely. There we go. The only reason it's important to bring it back to the center is so that you can maintain the shape a little bit better of your composition. So if you're looking for a different shape in your composition, you can move it in any direction that you want to. Because I want this to look similar to a flower, I am trying to keep the center of the piece in the center of my canvas. Shoot for that area over there. Bring it back some because it's losing its shape. And I have a lot of air bubbles in this. A lot more than I'd like to have. Sometimes it's best to let your paint sit so that the air can rise to the top of it. I've uh, heard it recommended that if you let it set overnight, that works best. Stretch it back. This is very pretty. These colors are gorgeous together. That purple flash color shift is uh, leaving some really pretty colored lacing in there. Really pretty uh, tone to the cells. Now I want to get back over here to the left a bit and stretch it. Get just over that edge and then I'm going to bring it back. Sides. It's moving incredibly slow right now. So, here's this one with the Australian Floetrol. I'm just going to cover my corners. Oop, picked up a 
little red with that one. I'll give you a close up of this one. There we go. See how the lacing came out? You can see that purple flash in there. It's very pretty. It should be very shiny when it's dry. Okay, now I'm going to set this one aside. And we'll work on the one with the American Floetrol. And as you can see in comparison, you can still see a lot of the white on the top there. It didn't get taken over by the colors. So let's get this moved around a little bit. Let me give this a torch because as it sat, some air bubbles come to the top. Okay. Just kind of assessing where everything is. I'll bring it that way first. Stretch it out. Bring it back. The lacing in this one is very pretty as well. Okay, I'm going to go right, catch the edge on this side here. Just let my colors go over. Bring it back and go to the other side. Give this a little help. Okay, get that back to the center, touch up my sides here a little bit. Okay, let me 
give you a close up on this one. Also very pretty lacing. So let me put these together and I'll bring the camera down and we'll do a good comparison over them. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. This is the one done with the Australian Floetrol. Show you the way the lacing laid out. And then we'll move over to the one with the American Floetrol. And the way that lacing turned out, they are very similar. I think without the Amsterdam paint, I know without the Amsterdam paint, you cannot get this lacing. I've tried with different brands of paint, and even the golden titanium white will not give you this nice lacing like this. This one stayed a bit more white in its lacing. And the Australian one, the white kind of disappeared into the colors. Some of the cells are a little bit different. So you let me know which one you prefer, which one you would prefer to try. The American Floetrol, if you're in the United States, is definitely easier to get. Less expensive. Like I said, that cost about $13, $14 a gallon where the Australian Australian Floetrol cost me about $35 with shipping and everything, and that's just a little pint of it. It's not very much at all. So let me know what you think, guys. Appreciate you coming, watching my little experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel. So here we go. Let me know in the comments what you think. Which one you think worked out a little bit better. And I will see you next time. Bye!